This video is a product buyer's guide intended for gift givers and adult collectors. Hey guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max. And Sang. We'd like to thank MGA for sending us all the Mermaids products you'll see in this video for free. There may technically still be a few weeks of summer left, but this coming holiday toy season is already coming in hot. Like, seriously guys, we have so much to discuss and catch up on, we know. We're working our way through it, we promise. In today's video, we'll be reviewing three new dolls and brand new characters from Mermaids Mermaids Color Change Winter Waves line, Christabella, Nira, and Gwen. We'll also be taking a look at the very first Mermaids playset accessory, the Color Change Ocean Cruiser. I'm not sure when Mermaids started driving cars, but <laughs> I'm intrigued. In their new Winter Waves adventure, returning characters Harmonique and Kishiko venture into the wintry land of Winterra and meet some fabulous new friends along the way, including the three characters we'll be checking out today. The Winter Waves doll series features five characters total. You can find Harmonique and Kishiko as well in luxuriously updated winterwear fashions. Just like their predecessor releases, these dolls have color-changing fins, but as a unique new spin, they now have snow globe-style tail fins filled with glitter. There are some other fun new surprises as well. Keep on watching and we'll share everything you need to know, including an honest summary of our adult collector hot takes by the end, of course. If you missed our review on Series 1 Mermaids, Harmonique and Kishiko, or want to learn more about this brand's origin, make sure to check out our previous review linked in the description below. Alright, let's dive in and see whether or not this Mermaids line is worth celebrating. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong brand. I forgot Mermaids doesn't do puns. Yeah, we're not doing puns. Are you sure? The Winter Wave dolls and the Ocean Cruiser are now rolling out to most major retailers, including Target, Walmart, and Amazon. Individual dolls and the Cruiser playset are both priced at $39.99 each. Links to purchase them online will be in the description below. Okay, let's start with the dolls. The Winter Wave packaging is similar to Series 1 with a few notable changes. The boxes are now more rectangular rather than the trapezoid shape and the entirety of the doll is sealed inside, tail included. The dolls are marked for ages 4 and up, and we once again see glam shots of each perspective character at the lower right side, with the new Winter Waves logo. A holographic letter M is inscribed on one side, and the other allows you to see clearly into the doll's window display. The back of each box is unique to character, showcasing various promo shots of the doll inside. Uniform across the full set is a photo of all five Winter Waves dolls at the top and a description at the bottom that reads, Across the shimmering seas where the sands turn to glitter, the winter waves crash to reveal new friends with a fabulous sparkle. Let's unbox them all and take a closer look. Up first, we have the aptly named Christabella. We believe she debuts a new skin tone for the brand, sporting a slightly darker complexion than Chanel. Just like the Series 1 dolls, this line includes inset eyes with rooted lashes. Over her lovely lavender eyes, Christabella wears shimmery eyeshadow that transitions from an icy blue at the inner crease to magenta and then violet at the outer corner. It's topped off with a deep indigo liner. Her lipstick includes an ice blue to violet gradient to match the shadow. You'll notice the Winter Waves doll's faces, along with their entire torsos, feature a glistening glitter compound. Christabella's hair is platinum white, mostly straight and very long. It's tied up into a high ponytail, complete with a series of silver hair rings at the center from her forehead. She has painted on baby hairs at the hairline, and a pair of pink sunglasses with silver rims are strapped to her head. And, of course, we have the ever-controversial inclusion to doll hair, tinsel. Christabella's hair is so long, this can be pretty tricky to brush through cleanly. You may get a lot of flyaways if you aren't gentle. And of course, if you're just not a fan of it at all, there are many methods across YouTube for removing doll tinsel. Her earrings are large silver hoops with a series of purple stud attachments. 
she wears a sculpted silver snowflake choker around her neck. The base of her signature outfit starts with a white crop top decorated in iridescent diamond pattern stitching on the collar and sleeves. It's designed to look like a vest layered over a fashionable open shoulder button up, but this is all connected as a single fashion piece, sleeves included. The faux vest section is a deep indigo color decorated in tinsel, giving it an almost fuzzy aesthetic. I love this fashion piece. I think it's so cute. So I was really curious if it could fit rainbow high dolls. And tragically, no, it's too tight around the torso. It doesn't fit. There's a well hid additional layer underneath. She also has a simple iridescent silver crop top with straps. If we remove her clothing entirely, we can see her painted on metallic bra top. You can never have enough layers in winter, even underwater, apparently. Christabella has an iridescent pink jacket with a faux fur lined hood, sleeve cuffs, and cute pom-pom drawstrings. You can fasten the jacket closed using real button closures. Although it seems to be a bit of a tight fit. We had trouble fastening the top one at all. This jacket is pretty to look at, but it's a bit of a stiff, crunchy piece and limits the doll's movement. Christabella's tail nails home the winter theme. She has sculpted silver snowflakes at her hips and across her rear, with a sculpted chain decoration across the front of her tail. Beneath the spray-painted white section, we can see her mostly translucent fin giving that classic snow globe aesthetic purple snowflake-shaped glitter can sway and float inside. The base of her tail fin is sculpted to resemble glacial ice, and the tail itself features a white to lavender ombre. Like Series 1 mermaids, Winter Waves also have articulated fin pieces, although we notice something a bit interesting about these ones. Christabella's can't bend completely flat or upright, so we were unable to stand her up on the fin alone. But luckily, the Mermaids team fulfilled a request we happens to mention in our Series 1 review. These girls each come with a display stand. The stands are the same across the complete series in pearly white with a total of three different sized clasps. You can store the ones you aren't using beneath the stand base. The larger one is helpful to wrap around bulkier clothing. If you dip Christabella's fin in cold water, you'll see her lavender ombre changes to a deeper pink. A bit like series one, we notice that you need to get the fin really cold for a noticeable change, so you may need to whip out some ice. Christabella has a cute round lavender purse with a faux pearl dangling attachment and a really cute light pink feather piece off to the right side. It has a faux chain handle and despite how it looks, you cannot actually open it at the top. She also comes with an additional six accessories to play with. An M logo compact with a real mirror and faux makeup palette inside a faux pink mascara that really opens up and actually has little bristles, which is a crazy detail, plus a plastic pink makeup brush with a handle for holding. She also has an adorable shell phone that really opens up, has a cute sticker screen and a sculpted keyboard. She also has an iridescent nail polish accessory, which once again really opens. And this color matches her hand's nails, very cute. Her final accessory is a simple black cup. Next, let's check out the goth style Nira. Word is she preferred the dark side of the ocean. Her eyes are mostly gray with lines of purple in the iris. She wears a matching gray eyeshadow coated in iridescent glitter, top off with black liner. There's a dusting of glitter at her inner crease and beneath her eyebrows. Her lips are a matte peachy pink. Nira's hair is mostly a deep indigo with magenta highlights. One section is tied into a long braid that dangles off to the right side of her face. The remainder of her long hair is tied into two twist braided pigtails at either side of her head. You notice a slight twinkle of tinsel in her hair as well, though she has much less than Christabella. This styling results in some interesting curly cues at top of her head. Her earrings are metallic silver hoops studded in spikes, with long spike attachments protruding from the bottom. She wears a pink studded black choker around her neck, complete with two plastic sculpted faux chains draping down the base. Nier's base outfit is a mesh high neck crop top with open shoulders. It's a shimmery indigo color with pink stitch trim. There is some small opening down the sleeve stitching, and once again this is all attached into a single piece of clothing. She has an indigo painted bra top over her bust plate, 
Arguably the best part of her fashion, however, would be this gorgeous faux fur coat. It's two-tone indigo and pink with a lovely iridescent lapel. As a great addition, this beautiful iridescent belt is a separate piece. This should be a lot of fun to mix and match with other characters. It has six dangling sets of faux pearl, three dangling off each side of the hip when worn. As this is not luxe enough, the interior of the coat is also lined in a soft pink fabric. Nira's tail starts with a belt-like design at the waist. There's a studded silver belt with faux violet straps and loop chains attached on the right. At the center is a cute heart-shaped buckle piece. This is fully sculpted on and cannot be removed. We once again see the snowy white glitter fade into her translucent tail, which is filled with iridescent star-shaped glitter. Nira's fin has a similar lavender ombre as Cristobella's, but in a different sculpt. This one looks both like ice crystals and the base of an electric guitar. Unlike Cristobella, Nira is able to bend her fin completely flat, which allows her to stand on her own. If you dip her fin in icy cold water, the top becomes two-toned to match the bottom. We can see shades of powder pink and icy blue respectively. Nira can carry a black purse studded in silver spikes. It has a pink brass knuckle style handle and an additional sculpted faux chain handle over the top. Like Cristobella, Nira has a full set of makeup and other accessories. She has a trio of nail polishes in yellow, purple, and blue. These once again can open up. Her shell phone is blue with a sticker photo of all five Winter Waves dolls. And she has a hot pink tube of mascara. One of the cutest accessories is her alternate purse. It's sculpted to resemble a pink pleather moto vest, complete with silver zipper and buckle details. This purse looks like it takes inspiration from the line of moto jacket bags from Moschino. It has a pearly white handle and has an opening at the top that can fit small items. She also has a baby pink mug, probably for winter cocoa. Our winter waves wash ashore with one final character, Gwen. Given her name and hair makeup combo, do we think she might be loosely inspired by Gwen Stefani? who, in turn herself, was inspired by Marilyn Monroe. Anyway, starting off with her face, Gwen has electric blue eyes lined in shimmery bronze eyeshadow at the upper and lower lids. Her lips are a ruby red. She has a dramatic highlight over her cheeks and above her nose. This highlight is pretty wild up close. It's kind of giving Trixie Mattel with those harsh lines. Gwen's hair is a bright yellow blonde with two long tendrils dangling from either side of her hair part. Each tendril is wrapped in a twist of tinsel. Two large braids extend off each side. Right behind that section is a French braid down across her right side. And the rest of her hair is tied back into a series of additional thick twist braids. There are seven total on the one we have here. Her earrings are silver hoops with wrapping chains and pink drop attachments. She wears a glittery, semi-translucent necklace that resembles ice crystals. Her outfit totally screams winter wear. There are more layers at work here than you might assume at first glance. She wears a pair of mesh gloves that go over four fingers and thumb, lined in white faux fur trim. These are very luxe pieces for Playline, and I appreciate how sleekly they fit. The top layer of her outfit is a sparkly, sheer corset with a printed diamond pattern. It can be removed as a separate piece. Underneath, she wears a strapless iridescent top trimmed in more faux fur at the bottom. On a mermaid body, I'd say this fits a bit similarly to a dress. Her bust sculpt has a painted baby pink bra top. Although this top and corset set works nicely as its own outfit, Gwen does come with one additional layer, a simple white faux fur coat. It uses the same fuzzy material as her other fur trims and the interior is not lined. Like the other characters, Gwen has white ombre spray paint at the top of her tail, dusted in glitter. A sculpted silver design wraps around the entirety of her waist. It almost reminds me of holiday wrapping. Inside her snow globe tail, we can see an iridescent star-shaped glitter with some shaped like little sparkle effects as well. Definitely sporting the most unique fin of the bunch, Gwen's is shaped like a swirling whirlpool or maybe a winter storm. It's filled with a glitter compound, and silver sculpting is wrapped around similarly to her waist. Because of the wavy shape at the hollow base, she can't stand very well on her own, so we highly recommend defaulting to her stand for display. If you submerge her fin in cold water, you can watch it change from a silvery white to a violet to pink gradient. Gwen comes with a cute flocked pink purse with a plastic blue ribbon detail. This is a solid piece, it does not open up. 
The shoulder strap is made up of faux pearls. In her accessories display, there is a red lipstick, mascara, pink lip gloss, and red nail polish. There's also a retro blue shell phone with a clamshell design on the back. Looks like she's texting Mira. Her pink mug is also very cute. It has a pearlescent sheen. Gwen's sunglasses are a clear baby blue with a white painted floral design. All right, now that we have covered the dolls, let's check out the Ocean Cruiser playset that they ride in. Over the front of the box, we can see an image of Shell Nell riding inside, with the glitter filled and color change feature fully on display. The interior of the car doubles as a color change station for the Mermaid's Mermaids, so if you like, you can pop up the hood and set your dolls inside to fill with water and activate her color change. On the back of the box, we can see the before and after color change of the car itself, among other promo images and descriptions. Fully unboxed, we can take a better look at the Ocean Cruiser itself. It sports a convertible design and is almost entirely translucent plastic. There are fully functional wheels at all four sides and a design that looks like flames over the front hood and either side. A cute license plate on the back reads bubbles with the B's as eights. If we peek inside, we can see clear plastic seats outlined in pink with a mermaid's logo and iridescent elastic seat belts that you can actually unbuckle. The heart shaped steering wheel can actually spin and it's a super cute detail. There are no doors in this car, so you need to completely remove the hood to fit your dolls inside. And we had a little trouble sitting them fully upright due to the limited articulation at the waist. It looks like Christabella here is leaning back a little. Two dolls total can fit inside, though it may be a tight fit depending on the characters. As for the color change feature, like the mermaid's tail fins, a very cold temperature is required to activate it. We tried rubbing ice over the side and it was minimal change, though the room we were in was pretty warm. Our best results came from placing the hood in the freezer for a solid 20 minutes or so. From there, we got a good look at the vivid blue and pink flames in the mermaid tail. Inside the trunk, you'll see two included packets of iridescent glitter. If you pop up the two compartments on either side of the cruiser, you can fill them up with water and this glitter to create a snow globe effect similar to the Winter Waves doll's tails. This is super cute in theory and surely pairs nicely with the color change, but it seems to require a lot of specific temperature and cleanup conditions that we aren't quite prepared for today. If you're curious about these dolls' articulation points, check out our Series 1 Mermaids review. Although the tail aesthetics have been updated, the posability of these dolls is completely identical to the preceding releases. Aside from the fact that, as we said, some of these characters can't stand on their fin alone. All right, so here are our final thoughts on the Mermaids Winter Waves dolls and Ocean Cruiser playset. In our first Mermaids review, I mentioned that this brand had a great foundation laid out for something special, but would benefit from a few key improvements. What's great off the bat in Winter Waves is that I think from a design perspective, almost all of the dolls here feel like a step up from series one. I think I honestly prefer Harmonique and Kishiko in their new winter looks. Although we didn't review them here today, I've seen Harmonique in person and she's gorgeous. The luxurious winter wear and additional layered fashions definitely feel like they take this brand further down the adult collector appealing road. I also personally prefer the snow globe aspect of the tails to the original designs, given it just feels like an additional play-based feature that can be fun and relaxing for kids and older collectors alike, which is a nice happy medium given the slight identity crisis at play with this series. That being said, I do still really wish these dolls were a bit more poseable. In addition to very limited movement below the waist, their heads are so top-heavy from these intricate hairstyles that it feels like they're constantly tilting and wobbling. These sculpts, I think, would really benefit from stronger peg support at the neck to keep things stable. It's really great. Mermaids seems to listen to a popular request from Series 1. The display stands are a very welcome addition, even if it seems to come at a bit of a cost of now unstable fins for some characters. Overall, I think pretty much every character in this line is beautiful in different ways. Even if I don't love Christabella's stiff jacket or Nira's somewhat simple base top, their alternate fashion pieces more than make up for anything not quite your taste. I know $40 will be a bit of a hefty price tag for some, but the mix and match options across all the fashion pieces and accessories here on top of the eye-catching pretty snow globe aspect, I think all definitely bump up bang for your buck.
I think out of the group, I really love Harmonique and Kishiko best. But if I had to pick a favorite out of this trio, it would be Christabella. She's absolutely lovely. As for the cruiser, I think there are some features here that work better in theory and not so well in practice. But if you manage to get the entire thing ice cold and can go through the somewhat messy process of glitter filling, it does look very cool. It's an eye-catching doll accessory overall, and it does fit Rainbow High dolls pretty well too, pro tip, but I wouldn't consider this a must-have to the same grade as some of the nicer dolls in this series. So a lot of my comments were addressed in Max's final thoughts. I do have to applaud MJ for listening to the critiques collectors had with the first wave of mermaids and made changes to their product. The stands are a very nice welcome addition, and they even include three clips of varying sizes, just in case certain outfits make one clip too small to fit around their waist. Honestly, I would love to see more of this in other doll stands. I think that all the winter waves mermaids have improved face-ups, so they're much more striking. Articulation continues to be my biggest critique of these dolls, so I hope they will address that in the future. We have seen articulation improvement with Rainbow High dolls over time, so there's still hope here. I'm also of the opinion that these dolls require such extreme temperature changes that there isn't much opportunity to see them in action unless you're specifically testing them out. The Ocean Cruiser is pretty cool. Fairly inexpensive for what you're getting and pretty much no assembly required. Everything is built and put together out of the box. And you just have to apply the glitter if you want. I'm not a huge fan of the idea of glitter inside the console since it isn't secure and could spill. You really don't want glitter mess in your house, nor do I think kids know not to pour glitter down the sink. But I think the Mermaids fans will enjoy the extra playtime with this added accessory. It does give you a way to store Series 1's Mermaids who have trouble standing on their own. And that's a wrap for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Definitely let us know what you think of Mermaids Mermaids Winter Waves and the Ocean Cruiser in the comments below. Links to playlists of other hugely popular brands from MGA will be linked in the description as well. Make sure to stay tuned to our channel. We have a lot of other stuff in the works, including things you guys have specifically requested. So hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.